Hello guys, welcome to online web tutor presented by Profotex Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning Coding Nitro version 3 HMVC tutorial for beginners. This is our part 9. Inside this video session guys, we are going to work with the database. We are going to save our user registration data to our database table. If I back to browser, now as we can see that so far we have made the user registration module. Inside this we have four different fields and if I press submit these are the form validation messages. So we are ready to save our form data to our database table. So firstly we need to create a database and a table for that. So back to our phpMyAdmin, click on the databases and let's say that learn CI underscore let's say HMVC press enter so successfully we have created our database called learn CI HMVC now inside this database I'm going to create a users table which basically save all the information what we will fill inside this form so back here let's say TBL underscore users and it will contain let's say one there are four different fields. Now I am going to take let's say seven fields. So why we have taken the seven columns we will understand in a bit. So scroll down. Let's say that the first column it should be primary key. So it should be ID. Next column we have something called from the form its name here. So name, email, let's say phone number and the lastly we have called I think designation so go here scroll down and let's say designation now in the next column I'm going to make call a status this basically represents that which user is active or inactive the default value of this status column should be 1 now at the last column we are going to create a column something called created at this is the insertion timestamp of this table so let's select the data type for this column so it should be let's say timestamp so scroll down timestamp and the default value for this column is current timestamp and status is integer value and the default value is something let's say one here for the designation it should be where care and let's say 20 characters in length or let's say 30 characters in length phone number it should be where care and the maximum length we are going to specify about 12 here email address something where care and let's say 50 characters where care and 50 characters first column should be our primary key so click on auto increment and set as the index name as the primary key and let's select that all the columns apart from our ID column contains the null value because this is a check for our null column so null and null and as we know that the last two columns contain our default values now let's create our table so go here click on save button and as we can see that successfully we have created our table something called tba underscore users to our database called learn CIHMVC. Now we have to make now connectivity with this database to our application. Now back to code and inside this code as we know that inside this application folder we have a config folder and inside this config folder we have a file and the file is called database.php where we can specify our database connection details so scroll down now here we have to provide the details so host name it should be localhost because currently we are using our local server or in if we just going to specify about the IP address so we need to specify 127.0.0.1 this is the local IP address now inside this username in my case it is root and root as the username and the password and finally inside this database if we go here and copy the database name back to code and pasting inside this variable now we have all the valid connection details of our database server now we are ready to use our table underscore users table so go to sign up module this is our sign up controller 
and this method as we know that will hit when we press the submit button. Now inside this successfully passed form data, again let's pass some value inside this form data. So this is something we have, let's say dummy details, mobile number something let's say dummy details. And finally, about designation, let's say BA here. Now, if I press submit button, as we can see that these are the data actually we are getting. Now, we have to save all these valid data to our database table. So, back to code. And if I make comment of this line, and before make comment, if I copy the syntax and let's say that data, let's say form underscore data equal to this input post. Now let's say that we have a insert data variable and inside this insert data let's say that this will be an array and inside this array I am to specify our key so back to our table and the first we ha have to specify about the name column so it should be name and name we are getting inside this form data and the index name we have something called txt name so copy this index and pasting it here and as we know that this is an array so we have to write as the index pair so if I copy and paste all these lines four times and the second we need to specify about the email column so here the column name we have called email so go here this should be email txt email next we have called txt mobile and the column we have called the phone so go here here it's phone and the txt mobile as the array index next we have something called designation and inside this we have called designation so back here and let's say designation and here it's DD designation and as we know that the first column is primary key so it should be auto increment the status column has a default value of 1 and the created at has also a default value which basically insert the current timestamp of the MySQL server so now we are ready to save our data so what will be the basic syntax to insert data as we had discussed many more times inside our code igniter playlist so here is the let's say insert data so this db and we have called insert method inside this insert method the first parameter we have to pass as a table name so as we know that the table we have called tpl users and inside the second parameter we have to pass the array variable so copy this pasting it here but remember this db is not available it's because we have not loaded our database so far inside this application we had actually basically provided our database connection details only so scroll to the top and go to the construct function what we have defined and inside this construct function actually we can load our database this is not a single option we can also define or load our database to this my controller also we can specify our loading database connection inside any of the controllers of this application this is all about modules if we don't want to load our database connection to our modules we can define inside anywhere of the controller of this application this db automatically reads about the database connection from the application as well now i'm going to load the database connection to this construct function of the sign up module so let's say this load and database that's it we have loaded our this db instance for the sign up module so go here and let's say that if inside this if condition 
it will return the true or false because the insert operation returns about the boolean value. So if we get about the true, it means that we are going to do one more library we are going to use called the session library. So if I cut this form validation, let's say array, form validation and let's say session. Why we are using session here? Because to set our flash messages. So let's say that this session let's say set flash data and inside this let's say success successfully data has been inserted so if I could cut this message from here and paste inside double quotes otherwise while getting a false boolean value it means we have some errors so copy this flash message pasting it here need to change about the key and let's say that field to insert data and here I am going to redirect let's redirect to our route and the route we have called sign up user so copy this and pasting inside here so copy that and pasting it here so after that now we have to receive our flash data to our view file now here this is our user registration if you go back and let's see our label so label here so after user registration let's see that here if this session let's say flash data and if we have the success key so let's say echo within h4 tag or let's say h3 tag and to copy this success message and pasting right here so if we get any success message after saving it will automatically redirect to this view file and print the success message here otherwise if we again copy here pasting it here now we have the error key so copy and pasting it here so now if we save all these changes back to browser reload this page now if I pass some data so let's say this is the data mobile number something dummy value and designation as web designer and press submit button now as we can see that successfully data has been inserted this is our one time flash data message back to table reload this page this is my PHP my admin error so don't worry at all now as we can see that inside this table we have now data now again let's insert one more data so here dummy data and choose designation as web developer and press submit successfully data has been inserted reload this page and as we can see that inside this table we have now two rows so successfully guys by the help of this video session we actually seen about how can we insert data from the modules to our database table so if I back to slide to understand about one more point so go here now the basic concept is that just forget about the modules as we know that inside application folder we have called controllers views config models helpers libraries and so many many folders inside we have inside application folder so if we are talking about the database configuration so as we know that inside this config folder we have a file called database.php we can just give our database connection details and operate the database to our whole application now let's say that we are going to make connection with more than one databases and one of the module is related to our another database. So how can we connect that? Let's say that 
we are just following a HMVC pattern to our CI application. Now as we know that inside this modules means modules folder we have module 1, module 2, module 3 and so on and each module folders contain the same pattern of folders what basically we have inside this application folder. Inside this module 1 also we have a config folder as we have seen so far. If I back to code now as we can see that inside the sign up module we have a config folder inside this config folder we have specified our custom routes for the sign up module so in the next video we will see that how can we make our database.php file inside this folder and also if we want to use another database connection instead of this application so how can we connect that so inside this video session guys if you went out then please drop your comment I will give my reply as soon as possible. So for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day.